I want to start today by sharing the story of a young lady, a hero to me and many, from the Chicago Police Department whom we lost last year. I've spoken about her before. Her name is Officer Ella French. Ella French joined the Chicago Police Department in 2018. By all accounts, she was an embodiment of selflessness. She loved people, she loved her family, she loved animals, and particularly stray dogs. She was known for picking them up in her squad car and ferrying them off to safety. She worked as part of the CPD's community safety team, a unit designed to build stronger ties with the communities that they served. Last year, sadly, Officer French made the ultimate sacrifice in her line of duty. She was shot and killed while making a traffic stop with her partners, Officer Carlos Yanez Jr. and Officer Joshua Blas. She was 29 years old. The gun that was used to kill her and to seriously injure Officer Yanez was straw purchased in Indiana. I'd like to show a brief video to help tell her story and the threats that law enforcement officers face. Please show the video. The night of July 1st, there was a mass shooting in Inglewood on a day that had already seen a child shot on the south side. This one left a one-month-old in critical condition. It was Officer Ella French who played a key role in saving the child's life, rushing the baby to the hospital. On Saturday night, French was killed in an ambush attack in Inglewood. Straw purchase pistol was smuggled through an all-too-familiar pipeline, Indiana to Illinois. Officer Ella French's mother looked out over a sea of blue, while over a thousand police officers cramming St. Rita Church. A line of mourners, thousands deep, wrapped around the perimeter of the Southside Chapel. Chicago's Archbishop described her connectedness, both to the community that she served and the people that she worked with. She was just 29 years old. She hasn't even begun her life yet. Two young police officers, both in their 20s, shot in the line of duty while responding to a domestic dispute. A Detroit police officer shot and killed in the line of duty. A police officer has been shot in Southeast Houston. A North Kansas City police officer was shot during a traffic stop and has life-threatening injuries. You never know, it can end in any minute. I mean, you could kiss your family goodbye, go to work, and, you know, make a traffic stop, and it could be over in a heartbeat. I'm not standing here reporting on a fistfight that keeps happening. In, in and around our community. I'm, I'm reporting on double shootings, triple shootings. At this point, the firearms are more dangerous than the drugs. It's way too easy for people to use straw purchasers and get these kind of guns in their hands. I want to protect citizens. I'm a protector. I want to protect my police officers, my own son, who's a police officer. And I think we can achieve both these objectives without infringing on anyone's rights. We need to change. We need to change the system. Too many officers, innocent children, Parents are being shot. This needs to stop. Officer Ella French is remembered and beloved for her profound generosity and her passion for service. My wife and I went down to St. Rita Chapel to join in the memorial service. We have never seen an outpouring of grief like we saw that day. We joined hundreds, maybe thousands of mourners who were there. Ella's mother, Elizabeth French, is with us today. I want to thank her personally for being here and for honoring the legacy of her wonderful daughter. <laughs> Officer French and her family remind us all of the sacrifice law enforcement officers make every time they put on a uniform. I met Officer Yanez at the Southside Irish Parade. He was on a golf cart with his dad and had a very positive spirit and determination to do everything possible in the rest of his life. With every disturbance call, every domestic violence incident, every 911 report of shots fired, officers put themselves in harm's way to protect us. Let me be clear, and I've said it many times before, I condemn all violence and threats of violence whether it's Antifa on the left or Donald Trump's January 6th insurrectionists on the right, no political grievance can ever justify attacking police officers. And we should honor the service and sacrifice, not just with words, but with action. In May, this committee reported five bipartisan bills to increase federal support for officer hiring and retention and support for officers who suffer job-related trauma. 
Congress also significantly increased federal funding for state and local law enforcement in the March Omnibus Spending Bill. And more than $10 billion, $10 billion from last year's American Rescue Plan has been dedicated to uh, community policing in over 300 communities. President Biden has called for more, for further funding in his new Safer America Plan. There are some on the other side who falsely accuse Democrats for wanting to defund the police. The record is clear. We are funding the police, and we should. But our work cannot end there. We cannot ignore the dominant role of guns in assault and killings of police officers. Our nation is awash in guns, estimating over 400 million firearms in our nation. Some of them, from straw purchased handguns to assault weapons, can pierce the Kevlar vests that are supposed to protect law enforcement. At least one witness today has a personal experience with that. From 2012 through 2021, 456 law enforcement officers across America were killed in gun attacks. During that same period, during the same period, 12 police officers were fatally shot in Canada. Four were fatally shot in the United Kingdom. Three were fatally shot in Australia. 456 in America. 12 in Canada, 4 in the United Kingdom, 3 in Australia. Guns are the second leading cause of officer line of duty deaths in America after COVID-19. Just last year in Illinois, we lost Bradley Police Sergeant Marlene Ritmanick, Wayne County Deputy Sheriff Sean Riley, Pontoon Beach Police Officer Tyler Timmons, Champaign Police Officer Christopher Overhelm, and Officer French to gun attacks. My heart goes out to each of their families and for their losses. We take an important step forward with last month's passage of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. It includes, finally, a provision that I've joined others in fighting for for years, cracking down on straw purchasing. Today I'm announcing a new bill which would provide funding to multi-jurisdictional task forces that investigate and disrupt straw purchasing and illegal firearms trafficking. With the gracious permission of her family, the bill will be named after Officer French. We must do more than prevent officers from being shot. We must do more to prevent officers from being shot. Just last month, Chicago police officer Fernando Ballesteros shot in the head while making a traffic stop. By the grace of God, she survived. In reflecting on her attacker, Officer Ballesteros said her situation demonstrates, quote, how quickly an officer's day can turn into something catastrophic. She's right. We have to do more to protect our law enforcement officers from the threats they face.